What's up, yo? I'm back again. It's early Sunday morning, and I figured I'd try to, you know, uh, work on this hats and sortie. The last time we were here, you know, I did a quick little autopsy and found that the hammer spring, I, I damaged the hammer spring on it. Since then, you know, I reached out to uh, hats and support, tried to get a, another hammer spring. When I contacted them, they said that they didn't have any spare parts. Um, when I asked if they had an ETA on when they would get some, you know, I never heard back. Until Friday when I got a package and they had sent me a replacement hammer spring. So, this is the replacement. Here's the original. So, one thing that's throwing me off is just the size difference. So, we're going to see what's up with that. The other thing is... Um, I was looking online to try to find a replacement, you know, while I was waiting on hats because they said they didn't have anything. So I ended up finding a couple of springs that were kind of the same size as the um, as the original. So here's one. This one I got on Amazon. You know, I did a measurement of the springs of the the wire diameter, the outer diameter, and you know how long the spring was, how tall it was or whatever. This one was pretty close. That's the original. That's the spring I ordered from Amazon. So you can see those aren't too far raw. Then I also found this spring on Amazon as well. Again, same wide diameter. Um, same outer diameter. Let's just get these out of the way now. So that's the other spring I found. So I found these two on Amazon. And... There's a slight difference. One's taller than the other. And then the original. So, I have these springs here, again. And then I have the hats in replacement. So you can see that there's a huge difference in these springs. I'm trying to keep this in frame. So those are the springs that I have. Again, the original that I destroyed. And then uh, some replacements. Hats and OEM spring. So, uh, let's see. It's a bit longer than the original. But we'll see, we'll see how that does. And then I have a spring that is similar to the original spring size and then one that's just slightly taller so what I want to do is I want to see if I can get this hats and sortie working again I also ordered another spring this one is kind of in the middle of the hats and replacement and this is the 45 millimeters spring this one is a bit thicker has a lot more you know takes a lot more to compress so I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that one I don't know if the the sortie has enough air pressure to, to even cycle that so again the last time you saw my my hats and sortie you know I had taken the the, you know the, the receiver out of the stock and then found this spring you know, and where we're at with the hats and sortie now is this this is what I did to it I broke this whole thing down I have the barrel here you know I gave everything a, a nice little cleaning I have the air cylinder off that's what it looks like on the inside. You know, 
not sure if that's you can see on that camera. I got a second camera right here. Of course, the barrel shroud with the spring. So, when I did an autopsy on this thing, I really dissected this thing down. I mean, I even have the the piece with the valve pin, which shredded my finger yesterday. I have the valve pin here, the tiny little valve pin spring. Over there, the cap. So that's the valve pin there. So I gotta put this back together. Have the O-ring that I gotta grease up, and then of course this. So it's pretty much the valve pin sits in there. So, I'm just going to oil this, grease this up. I figured if I got to put this thing back together, I might as well um, hit the record button. So, I don't know how much talking I'm going to do. because I've never taken this apart before. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm a absolute complete noob here. I'm just trying to figure my way out. I'll we'll figure this out as I go. So hopefully I don't make too many damaging mistakes like I did before. But what I'm using for the old rings is just, uh, you know, the super lube old ring grease. I also took the old rings off of the barrel. I took the O-ring out of the barrel. I have new O-rings here that I gotta use, but here's one of the old ones. I don't know if you'll be able to see. This is one of the outer, the O-rings from the outer barrel, but can you see like the little dings? It's actually got tears in it. I don't know if this is, you can kind of see it in the reflection. So these, the O-rings were damaged. Here's the other one. And again, this is on the outside of the barrel. So I ordered a couple of repair kits months ago for like um, my bull boss uh, <clears throat> and my BT-65. So I have a few <clears throat> O-rings left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this O-ring on back onto this. I guess this is the regulator or something. My little plastic tool from that. I fix it company that you know I used it my toolkit from them too so let's get this put back on here I'm trying to do this on the camera but it's kind of weird so I just put the old ring back there. I'm just gonna put a little oil. And then I'll put some grease on these old rings too. The metal isn't it's it's pretty rough. I actually sliced my finger on it yesterday. I just wanted to get, get that on there. Just a nice little layer of oil. So 
so I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. Again, I'm just kind of learning as I go. I'm talking wicked quiet too, because it's it's like 6:30 in the morning. My daughter's in the other room. I don't know if she's up or not, or she's sleeping. So this actually came out pretty dry. There was no oil or lube on it. So I'm just gonna put a drop. Drop of oil on there just to do something. I just dropped it in there. Drop of oil. Just gonna oil the spring. I'm not even sure if this is how you're supposed to do it, but again. I'll learn from my mistakes. I'll just oil this little piece here. And it just lines up with the spring. This tiny little tool just to tighten it. Boom. Okay, so that's pretty much done. Get that out the way. This is the right thing to do, but I always put just a little oil on the threads. the slice told you that piece right in here that little groove here is is sharp got me good slice that right open So now I'm, you know, I'm putting my blood into this. Not only my sweat and tears, it's got my blood now. Let me just get that tightened down. Cool. I'm just gonna put a little more oil on there. I mean, uh, a little more grease on those O-rings just so it has a, a layer because I you know, twisted it with this. Let's see if I can work with three fingers until that decides to uh, scab up a little bit. I'm just going to give it a drop of oil right on the valve here. Just work that in a little bit. 
Alright, so that's pretty much done. So one thing I am going to check is I just want to make sure this is tight. Okay, so that's too small. I don't even know why I keep this wrench here. It's fucking useless. and so he's fighting back against me doesn't like the fact that I tried to kill it well actually killed it and dissected it so now it's it's let me know so hopefully that'll uh, close up quick all right so now I'm just gonna get the uh, o-rings back on the barrel so I have Two brand new auto O rings. Just a little silicone grease here, that O ring grease. I'm like wicked shaky, I don't know why. I guess it's just my old age kicking in. And then I got a I got the original O-ring from inside the barrel too. Which is not damaged, it's actually in pretty good shape. Get a little oil on there. I know those are kind of a pain in the ass to get back in the barrel, so. So let's get the outer O-rings on first, just so that way they're out of the way. Actually, before I do that, let's just give the barrel a little oil. I gotta be careful not to cut myself some more. Because I don't know where there are other sharp edges here. So let's see if I can get these O-rings on here. That's one. I suck at this. There you go. 
is two. So we got those two on. I'll add a little more grease to that after. And then I gotta get this one in this groove here. So there's a groove on the inside of the barrel where this old ring lives. So this should be a pain in the ass. You might not be able to see what I'm gonna do here because I need to see what I'm doing. So wants to focus on my hands and not the barrel. So that's in there. That's oiled up. That's got grease on it. Let's just get a little more grease on these outside ones. Alright, the barrel is done for now. So the only thing on the receiver I haven't really taken apart was the trigger assembly. I did, I do have the exploded diagram, you know, um, downloaded, so I just really tried to see how this trigger assembly worked, you know, because I didn't want to take it apart. I'm not really comfortable about going in there and messing with those mechanisms, not yet anyway. There's, I think, three springs in there and like three or four different parts that have to work together, so... You know, that one I was a little iffy about. I did have to, you know, move the trigger so I can get to the three grub screws underneath that hole. Oh, where is it? Where you can see it holds the air cylinder in. <clears throat> but I think I did figure out how that trigger assembly works with the bolt. I mean the hammer, I got the hammer here. So we'll try to figure that out, get that in there and see if we can get it working. So, all right, so the thing I think I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the barrel together. So I think I was able to get that lined up. I have the barrel protruding a little bit. Look at me, I'm a fucking looks like I really did commit murder here. Thank 
fucking son of a fuck. So I had a second camera recording. Let me. So for this whole first 25 minutes, the second camera, when I hit record, it didn't record. It didn't even start. So I just started it now. All right. So let's get these grub screws in here. Let's lock this on. So I already oiled the, the grub screws for the barrel. So it looks like the transfer port hole is lined up. Let's tighten this down. So we got the barrel back on. Everything seems to be lined up. Here's the rod that works the semi-auto mechanism. And then here's the other piece where it screws in. So I just want to make sure that this is So I'm going to stop this here, it's at 29 minutes, and then I'm going to restart it, so I'll be right back. Alright, so we're just leading where we, you know, starting where we left off. All I did was just stop the recordings, and we'll try again. So I don't know what's going on with my camera right now. I don't know if it's going to be weird with the light. I'm seeing my display screen is kind of flashing. It's going in and out of, I don't know, it's bright, it's dim. Got this weird little symbol on it, so hopefully it's recording okay. It'd be kind of a waste if it wasn't. So let's, let's see. So what I want to do is I'm going to put the air cell in the back. So, you know, we already... Add a little oil. And we gotta remove this. 
very loose pin again. Let's get all this stuff lined up. And then for this we have three grub screws. You need the bigger bit. So this middle one is actually right over the, um, the transfer ports. Back in here. Okay. So we now have the air cylinder back on. We have the barrel back on. You know, I'll fill that at the end so we'll see if everything is holding there. So I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the, at least get the semi-auto pieces back together. We'll get started on that. So I already, I oiled this yesterday, so it's still, I mean, I'll put a drop on here, drop or two. Try not to cut myself on the tiny threads, because, again, nothing on here is, like, finely machined. Damn, I'm fucking shaking. What the fuck? I just want to get the oil in there. I'm only going to screw that in about halfway. Things upside down, but I'm just trying. I'm trying to get this thing back together. And then we have the other half of the semi-auto function here. That's where the recoil spring goes. That's where that other piece screws in right here. I should have put this one on first. There we go. Again, I'm going to screw this on. I think I did 12. 12. When I pulled it off, I counted the turns. That was like 12 turns, so. Hmm. 
course we have a uh, you know, recoil spring. I mean, the inside's already greased up. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put some grease on here too. See, I've never used this white lithium grease before, so I don't know what this stuff is about. I've always used just the synthetic, not the synthetic, the, uh, what is it called? Silicone grease. This thing was caked in this stuff when I first got it, so I don't know if I'm doing the right thing here, but we'll find out. This shit was a mess. Put that there so we don't waste it. It's actually moving smoother than it was before. So maybe that, this is the grease to use. So let's get the barrel shroud on now. So I'm gonna put a little, little bit in there too. Goes my toilet.
in there. So I just put the recoil spring back in. Not sure if I'm supposed to be mixing oil weight to grease, but I do anyway. It seems to help. I don't know if it does or not, but. that up a little more later all right so now I got those pieces back together I got about half a battery on this this camera so is this one recording that one's actually recording I don't know I wanted to use that one for the audio because the main camera this camera's audio sucks so all right so that's the gears I don't know if you'll be able to see them in the bottom I can't put those in yet because I have the probe the bolt and the hammer still out so I gotta get those in next and this is what I was worried about is getting the hammer back in there and not damaging the, the trigger assembly I think I figured out what I need to do that's gonna be the the big test there. So I don't know if I need this anymore. I don't have any more O-rings I have to deal with. I'm just kind of trying to figure out what what I'm doing next here. So we got all that trigger still working. Everything is still in place there. I guess now it's time to tackle this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to oil up this stuff now. Just getting a light coating. That was the hammer. Here's the bolt I think this is yeah the bolt so I just gave the hammer a quick little coating of oil cut the bolt
so this may end up getting a little awkward here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this part on the camera because I'm going to have to move. This part is a little bolt handle. goes this way and then this goes this way you can kind of hear it grinding so I think I'm going to give it just a little bit more oil right in there Right now, it's this piece is pressing on the trigger assembly that's on the inside. So I gotta push that piece down in there. So now here's what I'm worried about. This is like the moment of truth here. Because once I push that in, it's going to engage. And there it is. So it's now with the... So let me screw the bolt handle back in now. <clears throat> so I now have these two screws and these two pieces as well. go with this little gear here. I just can't remember how they go. I think it's like this. Those two pieces. 
pieces sit there. And then that sits on top. So, I don't know if you can see that, but and then this would sit Gonna give these a little oil. You would drop. And I'll get oil in the teeth of the gears later. And then I'll just rub some oil onto this. sitting on that uh, the probe Put that sitting there and I kind of damaged the screw a little when I was trying to take it out so hopefully we can get this tightened down fairly well so right now I'm just tightening I'm just screwing these in little pieces All right, so this one stopped let me hit record again actually the battery is about to die on that one and this one so I'm gonna stop recording here's where we're at I'm gonna swap the batteries and hopefully I can get the same camera angle and I'll be back So, just swapped out the batteries in both cameras and just went and plugged everything in to get the other batteries recharging. So, what we left off is I was just screwing these in to get them, you know, lined up so I can attach them to the Pro. You don't even screw in, you just... I'm sitting there screwing these things like it matters. Swap all bits here. Flathead.
sitting here making this shit hot for myself. There we go. Let's get the big one out here. These screws aren't too tough like they are. Mangle right now. I might. I, I think I'm gonna have to sand that down a little bit. Okay, so I just gave that a just a quick little. I hit it with the. I think this is like a 200, 220 grit, and here's a 400 grit just to smooth it out a little bit. Okay, so I got rid of the, the shop burrs on here. Hopefully not too much 
that sand paper. Okay. I mean, I'll give this a quick clean in here. We're another step closer. So let's get some oil in here. It's a light coating again just to keep it coated with oil. Get these gears in here now. Got the white grease again, that lithium grease. I'm just gonna put it inside here. Now I'm going to put the gears in. There's that. There's that gear. So, of course, drop of oil. oil Gears.
So I just made a nice mess in there. Just greased it up. And I do add oil too. So we got the action put back together. Again. I'm able to lock it. I'm just going to clean this off and then give it a little oil and some grease. Just a few drops. Being careful not to slice my fingers some more. We got our Phillips and we got these screws to put in here. Sounds like shit. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. All right. <clears throat> so now this is the part that I get a little worried about, a little confused. So now we are at, we have the adjustment screw. 
have like this little spacer that sits like that inside the hammer. <clears throat> and then the thing is, is I'm gonna have to put some force onto that hammer, like the um, trigger mechanism to get this, this hammer into place. drops of oil there. <coughs> Just a few drops of oil. I think it's this Allen key. <coughs> yep. So I'm just gonna screw this in. Just until I can't see the threads no more. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, damn. I need that coffee. I haven't had I haven't even had my coffee yet this morning. <coughs> so you can't really see it. Or you might be able to, but put that in there. Then this little spacer goes in. Drop oil. I just put it on into here so I can just at least get it into the hand. Boom. So now that's in the hammer. Can't really see it. And now we have this is the hats and supply hammer spring. So that sticks out kind of far. This is the part that I'm not really sure about because now I have to kind of force this this hammer past the um, trigger mechanism, well, at least to where it engages, and then I should be able to release it from here. There we go. That's what I was worried about. But you know, little research, and I think I think I figured it out. Now I'm not again. I'm not sure how this hammer spring is, where it's it's long. So I just put that back plug in. I guess you can call it the butt plug, <laughs> but I put that black back plug in, and it's back to where it was originally set. I have the grub screws here, so I'm 
going to lock that piece into place. That's so I'm able to cock it, uncock it. I can lock it into place. I don't know how if that string is that spring is too strong. Hopefully it's not getting damaged in there. Okay, there I can see it. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, it's right behind that piece. I, I tried. Now the thing is, is I gotta fortunately put some tension on here. I'm just trying to see if it's actually putting tension on. So now I'm loosening the tension. I'm not even sure where I am on the tension wise. Right now I just want to get that in there. Make sure I'm on the threads. Alright, I'm going to stop this and then restart. Okay, I could actually see the spring moving in there. So I'm gonna set it here for right now. Yeah. 
I'm just checking to see, make sure that I didn't, you know, do anything to the spring. So let's take a look. So spring still looks good. So let's try something here. this to move so I'm just going to kind of hold that in place So, I'm just winding it, so you can actually see when I'm doing counterclockwise, the spring is coming out with the bolt. If I turn it clockwise, then I'm able to push the spring back in. So counterclockwise, the adjustment screw. to the spring. Not yet anyway. Okay, let's get this back on here. I got that really easy to screw in now. That was really hard to unscrew before. It was all gritty and grind, you know, grinding. I can get that lined up and, and it has little kind of tabs where that grub screw will fit when you screw it in. So this grub screw is not even, it's not really even you know, tightening on threads, it has its own little groove to tighten into. Clockwise is
busy now, like he... Guess we'll start here. I mean, we gotta pick a place to start. any of what I just did. Trigger seems to be working. <clears throat> Alright, so now I just gotta get the stock back on here. Which I have right here. Which you see me unfortunately do a thousand times before. working. It is pretty tight.
truth. Here we go. Let's do this slow. So right now I just filled it up to 100. So let's just uh, give this a few minutes. We'll see if um, if this holds air. I don't hear any leaking, and then um, we'll fill it back up to the 200 bar, and we'll see. We'll have to try to figure out how to get back out there and, and test it. So I'll be back. Alright, so I just let this sit for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, I think about somewhere in between that, just to see, you know, we filled it to about 100 bar, you know, after I put it all back together, I just wanted to make sure that it was holding the air, and it is, it's at, still at the 100, maybe more like 90, 95, just because it, you know, the tank cooled down, so I'm going to ref, I'm going to, Fill it up to the 200 bar. Just so we can get a full fill on this. And then, you know, the next step is to get out into the field. And see if I can get it to shoot, get it to cycle. And see if we can get that FPF, uh, uh, that, SP, that FPS back up to where it's supposed to be. So... And there's 200. Let me just let that settle real quick. Little bottle here, the um, cylinder is warm. So we are at that, just about 200, that 190, 200 range. So I think, you know, I still got to put this back on, so might as well do that. I can't remember where I had it fitted before, but we can always make adjustments at a later date. I really don't like how these things fit on here. Because <clears throat> they're not perfectly centered. But there it is. So the hats and sorty. second camera died I'm not gonna swap that battery again so because we're pretty much done here so hats and so you reassemble safety's working it's filled to 200 bar 
so I now just have to get it out into the field get some mags through it if I can and then we'll have to run it over to crony so I think that's it for now that's a wrap I'm gonna leave you guys here at least for now and then uh, hopefully I'll be out in the field where we'll continue so I'm gonna wrap it here I'll see you soon